cause the copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars to broadcast 294 regarding an escaped convict. Be on the lookout for Louis Hagen, known as Louis the Rat. This man escaped from San Quentin Prison this day. He is armed and dangerous. That's all. No good. <laughs> Recent figures show that there are more automobiles in the United States than in all the rest of the world put together. There are more cars per capita in California than in any other state in the Union. It is highly significant, therefore, in California that one gasoline should receive the unqualified endorsement of those who drive the most and know the most about motor fuel. The new all-purpose Rio Grande Cracks comes to you after having first been acclaimed by the drivers of police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency automotive equipment. All-purpose Rio Grande Cracks meets every demand placed on it in emergency driving. It will more than answer every demand you make, regardless of your emergency. It is different, it is superior, because it is made that way. All-purpose Rio Grande Crack is scientifically made of six important power-producing ingredients instead of the three found in most ordinary gasoline. What it is doing for emergency public serving cars, it will for your car. So visit the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood tomorrow morning and get a tank full of all-purpose Rio Grande Crack, the most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. The story we are to hear tonight has been taken in the main from the files of the Portland Bureau of Police. It ended in Los Angeles, and we have asked Chief of Police Arthur C. Homan of the Los Angeles Police Department to open our program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For the past five years, the theme of this program has been that crime does not pay. Many of us are the opinion, however, that punishment does not cure crime. We have begun to doubt if they materially lessen crime. Some other way has to be found. That way is crime prevention. In government, as in business, goodwill is a valuable asset. In government, goodwill takes the form of public service. Public service is that desire on the part of the good citizen to use his abilities in ways that transcend mere personal gain to do something for the other fellow. This aid may not be given directly to the state, but by working quietly in the law enforcement work of our nation, not to apprehend criminals, but to prevent crime by a better dissemination of the techniques of good citizenship. Such men and women are doing a valuable service toward crime prevention and toward stressing the fact that crime cannot pay. Tonight's story has its beginning in a California road camp, not many miles away from the grim walls of San Quentin Penitentiary. Two convicts, separated by several yards from the main body, unobtrusively edge closer together as they ply their shovels. Listen, Baldy, I want to tip you off to something. Yeah? Keep on working while I talk. The judge watching us all pretty close. Okay. What's up? We lamped in our seat. One o'clock's the time set for our getaway. One o'clock? Yeah. We got a key to open our irons. Nice going, Louis. That ain't all. I got a jumper wire ready so we can grab the head screw's car. Yeah, but listen, they got a machine gun. Mind the machine gun, Baldy. I got my plans all set, and I'm not stopping for no machine gun. Not with 25 years staring me in the face. Well, I don't know. Look Maybe... here, Baldy. You with me or ain't you? Sure, sure. I'm with you, Louis. Well, pipe down a little, will you? You'll have that guard over here. You didn't hear nothing. Which way do we land, Louis? For Richmond. Southern Pacific passenger train goes through there at 135 heading north. We'll grab the blind and ride her on up. Okay, by me. Got a gas? Yeah, but they got something pretty near as good. What do you mean? You know that guard is posted out in front nights? Yeah. Well, I got a club to lay him out so they'll never know what hit him. Louis the Rat, they call me. Okay. I'll show him I can be Louis the Rat. And a rat's plenty of bad medicine when he's caught. It. Take it easy, will you? The guard's beginning to head over this way. Okay. But don't forget. One o'clock tonight. <laughs> Guard? 
We'll sneak up on him through the green patch. What if he sees us come out this door? He won't. We'll wait till he turns his head. And we duck out fast and close the door behind us. Look. He's starting to turn the other way. Ready, Luke? Okay. Come on. Down, down. Get down, quick. Well, now all 
we got to do is roll it down the driveway to the van, and we're all through. I'll take care of that. You pick up the runway over the back steps and bring it along. Okay. Hey, and you better close the back door. I already locked up in front. You sure we got everything? Yeah, yeah. There ain't even a curtain left in the place. Now, yeah, let's go. Pardon me a moment, please. I noticed you've been moving the furniture out of that house. Yeah, what about it? Who are you? I live next door here. I didn't know the Frasers were moving. No, well, people do it right along. And so far as I know, most of them don't bother to ask their neighbor's permission. I've been perfectly civil to you. And there's no need for you to take that tone. I don't like people who don't mind their own business. In a sense, this is my business. Just this morning, I had a cable from Mr. Fraser asking me to attend to some things for him. What's it got to do with me? The things he requested me to attend to showed he had no intention of moving. Have you thought that he just might want to store his stuff until he gets back? I hardly think he intended to do that either. What you think don't make no difference to me. I got my orders. Where are you taking this furniture? To a storage house. And now I got work to do. There's something mighty fishy about all this. I'm going to find out. Hey, Louis. Who's this guy who just called? It's one of them nosy neighbors. I've got a hunch he's going to call the cops or something. Come on, hurry up and help me get the scene of the van. We'll get out of here. You said it. <laughs> Racket beats anything I ever turn my hand at. It's a cinch. We've been here only a couple of weeks, and I bet that stuff we got piled up in the old warehouse you rented is worth 30 grand easy. It wouldn't be so easy for you, wise guy. It takes brains to frame a racket like that. Say, in another month, there ain't be... gonna be another month of it, Baldy. We're quitting this racket right now. Quitting it? Yeah. Have you gone nuts, Louis? We're just getting started. I said we're quitting it. Now, look, Louis, use your head. The well, cops he... are getting wise to us. One more job, and they'd probably be down on us like a ton of brick. Uh -uh. We're stopping while the stopping's good, Baldy. Well, maybe you're right. But when you got a good thing like this by the tail, it seems a kind of shame to let it go. Oh, uh, well. What happens now? I had a truckload of packing cases delivered at the warehouse. We're going down there and crate up the stuff. Oh, yeah? Crate it up, huh? That's what I said. What do you mean, crate it up? And after you get them packing cases piled up all pretty, what do you figure on doing with them? We're shipping them south, where the stuff won't be so hot, and we can peddle it safely. Uh, no, we're not. No? That's what you think. Listen, Louis. I'm taking my cup right here in Portland. Don't be a sap, Baldy. We couldn't sell any of that stuff here. The cops would have us back in stir before you could bat an eye. Maybe and maybe not. But I'm telling you, I'm taking my cup right here. Oh. So it's going to be like that, is it? Yeah. I'm taking the jewelry for mine. You can have all the rest of the junk. Oh. So you take the jewelry, eh? Yeah. That'd make you happy, would it? Sure. Well, you listen to me. They'll take nothing, see? You're going south with me. Not a chance. We're splitting the stuff right here in Portland. <laughs> Why, Baldy, the first thing you know, you'll have me thinking you don't trust me. Sure. Sure, I trust you. Just about as far as I trust a water moccasin. You suppose I don't know how you come by that moniker, Louis de Rath? All right. All right, Baldy. We'll split this stuff here. And I'm taking the jewelry. Sure, sure. It's okay by me, Baldy. It's fair enough. What? I should think it was fair enough. Only, uh, don't you think you ought to help me crate up the rest of this stuff? I can't very well do it alone, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's all right. But let's get on down to the warehouse and get it over with. I don't know. But it seems kind of screwy to me. You're changing your mind so quick about things, I mean. <laughs> well, after all, you're my pal, ain't you, Baldy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> case all nailed up. And that tax on the last shipping tag. <laughs> Los Angeles, California. What are you going to do with all this stuff when you get it to Los Angeles? I'm going to open a high-class second-hand store, and my stock is in these crates. Louis <laughs> <laughs> the Rat running a store. That beats anything I ever heard. Good morning, lady. Could I sell you a genuine oriental rug at just about half a Cut it, Baldy. You ain't so funny. <laughs> but Louis running the rat running dirty respectable. If that ain't funny, then I don't know what is. You heard what I said. Cut it. Okay, okay. Don't get yourself in a ladder. Let's hurry up and get out the jewelry. I got a blow. Uh, oh, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I guess I didn't figure this job right. I got a packing case left over. One too many. So what? Who cares? 
Let's get her for jewelry. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the jewelry. Come on, I got a blow like I told you. You know, Baldy, I, I must be getting absent-minded. I made him with a jewelry. Well, yeah. Who it? What do you think I'm going to do? This cat may not look like a camera, but I'm going to take your picture with it just the same. Why, you low down. Oh. Hmm. Kind of lost your interest in jewelry now, Baldy? <laughs> All right. And did the creature go? There. Now, some burlap packed around you. Do it just here to make you look pretty. <laughs> yeah. And now for the top. Louis, <laughs> yeah. that. That's a good name. But I didn't like it the way you used it, Baldy. You know, better men than you have learned that a rat can bite. Thirty grand, you figure this stuff, huh? Well, it'll be thirty grand just for me. Ah, well, just tack a shipping tag on here. Oh, let's see. Sure, sure. <laughs> Why not? The warden would be glad to have him back. <laughs> I'll address it, uh, Warden San Quentin Penitentiary, <laughs> San Quentin, California. <laughs> it's just a little joke, Baldy. Too bad you ain't here to appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, who is it? What is that your plans for? Oh, okay, just a minute. You got some freight here to be picked up? Yeah, yeah, all these crates here by the door. Yes, sir. How about that other box? One standing over there by itself. Does that go, too? No, I'll just skip that one. I'm taking care of it myself. A few days later, Louis Hagen and his crates arrived in Los Angeles. The police were unaware that this unsavory character had graced the city with his presence until one day Louis the Rat appeared in the offices of an assay company on the second floor of a downtown building. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Listen, uh, you praise old gold. Yes, sir. And we can melt it down for you, too, if you wish. Okay. I want you to take a look at this stuff. All right. See, I got quite a lot of it there in the box. I see. Rings, brooches, stick pins, all that sort of stuff. Uh -huh. Well, it's rather unusual. Some of this is. Now, uh, you take this old breast pin. That's an heirloom, I should say. Never mind what it is or what any of this stuff is. All the stones have been taken out of the settings, and this is nothing but a lot of old gold now. Well, you have got quite a lot of it there, sir. It's valuable, too, if the quality of these things is good. What do you mean by valuable? Uh, how much do you think this stuff is worth? Just offhand. Well, it'd be pretty hard to make an estimate anywhere near correct, sir. We'll have to test for quality before I can give you an accurate appraisal. How long will that take Oh, I guess I can have a report for you sometime tomorrow afternoon, say by around 4 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, it'll be all right. And we can determine by then whether or not this old gold is worth melting down. Okay, run a test on it, and I'll be back tomorrow. Oh, um, you're a manufacturing jeweler, I suppose, huh? Uh, what'd you say? A, uh, manufacturing jeweler. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 sure, that's me. Oh, uh, what's the name, sir? The name is, uh, Smith. J.H. Smith. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Uh, we have to have a fire records. I'll, I'll have a report ready for you by 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, Mr. Smith. Okay. And get this. If you treat me right, we may be able to do quite a lot of business together. Well, see you later. The suspicions of the clerk employed by the assay firm were instantly aroused by this strange collection of old gold. He immediately got in touch with Los Angeles police and it an hour later, Detective Lieutenant Paul Lee and Sergeant Barber were examining the contents of Louis the Rat's wooden box. Yeah, there's certainly something screwy about this, Lee. Look here, for instance, these fraternity pins and class pins. And here's an old brooch. A beautiful specimen of handwork. That's right. A good half of this collection is made up of heirlooms and pieces that are obviously keepsakes. Not the kind of jewelry that's melted down, but it's gold. Well, I've already formed my opinion. What's yours? Why, these things have been stolen, of course. Sure. A manufacturing jeweler is nothing but a thief. 
What I can't figure is none of these articles checked with our lists of stolen jewelry. Right, but our lists concern only articles that have been stolen here in Los Angeles. I have an idea these things will be identified quickly enough when we look up Mr. J.H. Smith and find out where he came from. Uh-huh. But anyway, we'll be at that assay office tomorrow afternoon when he comes in to get his report. Huh? I'll say we will. Meanwhile, I'm going to take these things back over there and instruct the clerk to return them as they are. He can tell Smith they're brass or something. That's right. We'll need them the way they are if they're going to be any good as evidence. <laughs> They'd be a big help in court after they were melted down, wouldn't they? o'clock already, huh? Begins to look like Smith wasn't going to show up, Barbara. Well, we'll stick around until the office closes. And then if he hasn't shown up, we'll come back in the morning. The only trouble is I've got to be at the district attorney's office before six o'clock. Reports on the case. Well, go ahead, Lee. Chances are Smith won't drop in here before tomorrow anyway. Well, he may or he may not. We don't know anything about this fellow, you know. He might turn out to be a pretty tough customer. Oh, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Okay, but I wouldn't take any chances. You better keep your gun handy. <laughs> you get to be more like an old woman every day, Lee. Go on along, keep your appointment with the DA. I'll take care of Smith if he shows up. Well, I suppose I'll have to. Let's see. I guess this side door leads out into the hall. I don't want anyone in the front office to see me when I go out. Yeah? Leads into the hall, all right. Uh, so long, Barbara. So long. Good luck. I'll give you a ring if anything happens. Okay. Do that, will you? It begins to look as if Mr. Smith wasn't going to be in this afternoon, sir. Oh. Uh, the other detective's gone, huh? Yes, he has some reports to make on another case. I see. Uh, you're all set on what you're going to tell this Smith in case he does show up, aren't you? Well, I think so, sir. I'm supposed to tell him that the articles are mostly brass and not worth much, huh? That's right. And say, maybe yeah. you'd better bring the package with the stuff in it back here. Okay, I'll do that. We'll leave the door open between here and the outer office, but... That'll give you a chance to tell me anything you think I ought to know when you come back for it, you see? Yes, sir, that's right, it would. But, um, well, uh, I, I was just thinking... Yeah? Well, will it be absolutely necessary for you to make the arrest in the office? Uh, you see, it... Well, it might appear as... Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Well, don't worry about that. You just let me know when he comes in. I'll slip out this side door here into the hall. I can catch him at the top of the stairs when he comes out of the front office. Well, thank you, sir. The firm is going to appreciate your concern, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, that's all right. I'd figured on making the arrest out there anyway. Did I understand you say you closed the office at 6 o'clock? Yes, sir, that's right. Well, that's less than an hour to wait then. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to the outer office. I've got quite a lot of... Go time. ahead. I'll just sit back here and help myself smoke. Hey, you got my report ready for me? Oh. Oh, Mr. Smith. About the jewelry, you mean? Of course, about the jewelry. I didn't ask you to make a report on nothing else, did I? <laughs> uh, no. No, indeed you didn't. No. Well, how'd it come out? What's the report say? Uh, why, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, but uh, we tested. Well, that is... Hey, what's the matter with you? Come on, come clean. What's it all about? Well, you see, we give everything a most careful test. Will you quit stalling and say something that makes sense? Well... The truth of the matter is, sir, these articles are, are they're, they're mostly brass. Brass? Uh, yes, sir. And, of course, it would be hardly worth your while to melt them down. So, you see... Brass? Uh, yes, sir. Of course, uh, you, as you're being a manufacturing jeweler, you'll readily understand that... Well, you'll readily understand. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brass. Say, if I thought you was trying to pull a fast one on me... Oh, no, no, I assure you, Mr. Smith, that these articles are... They're, they're quite valueless. As a matter of fact... Well, as a matter of fact, here's the report. You can read it yourself. Oh, forget the report. Just give me my stuff, that's all. And be sure it's all there, see? Because if I need, I'll be back. Uh, yes, sir. I can assure you that the collection's intact of the tiniest piece. Um, the package is in the back room. If you'll excuse me for just a minute, I'll go Okay, but it. make it snappy. He's out there, sir. Yes, I know. I heard him. I'm going out through this side door now. Try to hold him in the office for a minute if you can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll try. Well, hurry up, hurry up. I ain't got all afternoon. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, here you are, Mr. Smith. I'm, I'm awful sorry that Never you... mind how sorry you are. Just give me that package. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing more, sir. There's a small charge for... A small charge? For what? Telling me this stuff ain't no good? 
Well, sir, you see, well, it's customary to make a Don't hand me that bunk. I ain't paying off no graft to no sniveling clerk, see? But, but Mr. Allen... Nothing. Just try and collect it. Yes, sir. Brass. Stop brass. That monkey's been lying to me all... Hey, you there, just a minute. Yeah, what do you want? I'm from police headquarters. The boys down there would like to ask you a few questions. What about? Well, come along, you'll find out when you get there. And if I don't feel like coming along? Oh, I think you will. You do, huh? Well, I don't. I just don't like cops. You know, keep your hand away from that overcoat pocket. You'll have a good reason for not liking them. You hear me? Keep your hand away. I'll show you. <coughs> oh, a gun, eh? Oh, no, you don't. Drop it if you don't want your wrist broken. Drop it. Now get those hands up high. Reach. We're not a bit backward about snapping the cuffs on tough babies like you. I've got you, copper. I'll break your fool neck. Hey. Now, don't try grabbing for that gun. Let go of it. Try and make me, copper. Might as well let go of it. You can't use it while I got this hold on you anyway. Oh, yeah? Get wise to yourself, will you? You ready to cool off and ride down to the station with me? Listen, copper. If there's any riding to be done, you'll be doing it in a hearse. Okay, buddy, if that's the way you feel about it. Ah, so you think it... Hey, hey, look out, look out. Ah, see, we're going to fall off this stairway landing. Okay. Hey. Oh. So, oh. She landed underneath, did you? Uh, you dirty copper. You got what was coming to you. I hope it killed you. I got a lamb out of here. Stop, stop, I tell you. My hand make me copper. Stop around, shoot. Go ahead, shoot. He killed the guy. Too bad, buddy. But you asked for it. In just a moment, we shall hear the concluding facts regarding our program. Calling all cars tells you that a crime against society does not pay. Rio Grande Cracked will tell you that it's a crime against your pocketbook and intelligence to buy just any gasoline. All-purpose Rio Grande Cracked costs you less money and less than many even inferior gasolines because it takes you more miles, more quickly, more smoothly, more surely with less of a tax on your motor. That's why I suggest you get a tank full of all-purpose Rio Grande Cracked not later than tomorrow morning. And now, Chief Holman. Louis, severely wounded, was taken to the George Street Receiving Hospital where he died less than an hour later. The loot which he had shipped to Los Angeles was recovered and subsequently returned to its rightful owner. Thank you, Chief Holman. Police calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation of broadcast 294 regarding an escaped convict. The suspect in this case was killed resisting arrest. And that's all. Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at this time, Rio Grande will present the case of the 26th wife. 